birthday present from my former boss as a uh, good luck on your way kind of thing. Uh, he gave me an Amazon Echo. Um, let me back up. My name is Wesley. Uh, uh, hobbies. Um, I do woodworking, rock climbing. I sometimes hack on stuff, but not as much as I would like. I play a lot of games, video games and board games. There's a good board game meetup here in town as well, if anybody's interested. There's two big board games. Two board games. Awesome. The Wednesday night and the Thursday night. What's that? Pokemon tournament. Um, so, having gotten this Echo, I decided that I didn't want to just use the built-in stuff. Similar to, if you've ever like looked into DevOps stuff, they always tell you you shouldn't just rely on the built-in integrations because they probably won't give you quite what you want and you don't necessarily want to be locked into depending on some random service to always be working as an intermediary for something that's important to you. So in the same sort of vein, I decided that I would try to like figure out how to do my own integrations into the Echo thing instead of relying on what they call skills. So like you can go to um, uh, Amazon Alexa, see if I can find the dashboard here. There's a sort of dashboard for it where you can go in and see, <coughs> see different skills and stuff. This is not it. Um, so is everybody familiar with what the Echo actually is? The stalker? It's like this cylindrical device, it's about this big. It sits somewhere in your house. It has like six microphones right around the top or something like that so that it can hear very clearly even over noise if you say things. It has then the command word that wakes it up, which you only have three choices. It can be either Echo, Alexa, or Amazon. But when you say one of those three words, it will wake up and wait for you to say something that it then can do something with. If you say something it just doesn't recognize, I think it basically just times out. Like there's a circle of LEDs around the top that spins when it's thinking. And so if you say something that's like nonsense or it doesn't get, it'll spin for a little bit and just stop. But if you say something it understands, it will respond by usually giving you a verbal response of some sort. So one of the main things that I do with it is in the morning when I make my coffee or whatever, I say echo news. And I configured it before that the news that I care about is NPR. So it will get the NPR news brief, which is like the, you know, Podcast. the biggest things that are happening in like four minutes or something. And it will start playing that back. So the interesting part about that to know if you want to like hack on this is that it isn't just like, you know, text to speech to speech to text, or I might have gotten that in the wrong order, but it isn't just that. That is like at the core of it, and a lot of what you're gonna do would be that kind of interaction, but you can also give back a response that has a URL that references an MP3, and we'll play that back instead. So the way that they can do like the music stuff is that they send back a response that says, as a response, I want you to just start streaming this MP3 file, basically. And so then it streams the NPR or whatever. Um, so the other thing that I thought would be cool for you guys who might not have this like $150 device that I wouldn't have if somebody hadn't given it to me probably is that um, Evan Phoenix, who's done a lot of stuff in the Ruby community over the years, has this, which I haven't played with, but one of my coworkers has. Um, you have to do a little bit of setup stuff, but then basically what you have is a command line Alexa device. So basically you like, um, if you see here, you have to do some configuration, and you have to sign into the, uh, the dashboard and get credentials and stuff. But once you have it all set up, you like type in whatever the command is on the command line. I don't actually know what it is. Here you go, Alexa. So you type in Alexa, and it will wait and listen to the mic until you say something, and then it will take whatever that is and do something with it. So it's not by default set up to sort of like daemonize. It's not always listening. It's more that you like type the command and say something, and it will do it. So given all that, I did a little bit of hacking here and set up a simple server on Heroku that basically when I would talk to my thing, I set up a skill in the Amazon dashboard and called it Alfred. So I can say, Echo, ask Alfred something, and it will actually make that call to my server. Um, and if I just pull this up, um, you can see a little bit this code is pretty simple. This is the whole server that does everything, basically. It's a little bit awkward because I didn't really make a huge effort to like, make it nice and pretty. I just was trying to get it to work. 
So it comes in. I have decided that I will just have it check the username and password that it pulls out of the uh, environment variables, just so that like some random person can't make requests to the server and how to do things that I know it's coming from Alexa because I told Alexa to call it with that face it off. Um, and it does that a couple of things to check that the application ID that's coming in is what I expect, that the request is relatively recent. Um, these are things that Amazon tells you are obligated to do basically if you wanted to publish a skill. If you don't do this stuff, they won't actually publish it. They'll like check and be like, oh, well, you passed an invalid application ID and you still accepted it, so you clearly aren't like matching up with our security expectations. So anyway, you get this. Launch request is the main one you'll get, which is that like you started a new request. Um, and so this parses it and basically um, sends back a, a simple response, which is that you told me to launch and didn't give me a specific command. So I give it this text and I'll read that aloud. I use plain text so it just like takes the string as it is and does it. There is like this uh, like phonemic markup language. I don't even know what to call it exactly, where basically you can like add tags that will tell it to like put an emphasis on this syllable or whatever. So if you want it to like sound in a very particular way or if it's not in English, you could potentially do this markup to get it to sound exactly.
So the only time I've actually used it was when I was making bagels and I was trying to get them to rise. <laughs> so I used it to check the temperature in the place where the yeasted bread was, basically, to make sure that it was high up, which my wife thought was ridiculous. But, you know, that happens. Um, so anyway, it's pretty cool. 